Hello, YouTube, and welcome to episode number 11 of this here Let's Play Suzerain playthrough series of Suzerain. We are shattering the Sorter School tradition. We are shattering the old guard. We are shattering all traditions that do not improve the lives of our people, because they, after all, are the ones who matter. Unfortunately, our economy sucks, and our budget is terrible as well. So we're trying to, to, to uh, rescue the economy from the terrible, 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 terrible depression that seems to be upon us. <sighs> we have released political prisoners, given them amnesty. That's excellent. Very happy to do that. Made a decree for gender equality. We are finally de desolonizing society, and that's in the radical. Good stuff. Geopolitico says we're circling... Oh, wait. Circling over Stallport. Um, yeah, this is about the uh, probable invasion of, um, of Agnolia there. Okay. Cool. We got some, uh, some news and notes in Rum Rumsburg, which is uh, a little bit scary. Okay, here's Lenkirk. Commerce at an all-time high... Yes, the highway has done well. We're still at one economy, but but we're getting there. We're making making progress, making meaningful progress here. Okay. Queen demands reparations for 15-year war. Yes, we saw this last time. We're analyzing the situation. Okay, well, that's going to be a big deal soon. Because we can't afford that, basically what it is. Trade talks with Volksland. That's what we want to see. We need to improve our economy. So the large Volkslandish ship has has uh, docked in Lekaven. I entered the luxurious compartments reserved for heads of state. I lay down on the bed to rest my eyes before we arrived at Wilburn, a major city. Oh, we're traveling, not them. Okay. Um, the Mercian Sea was known for its treacherous waters. However, the trip so far had been rather calm and quiet. I couldn't sleep. I went out to the upper deck to have some fresh air. Sea breeze brought a salty and briny smell. I saw Devon leaning over the railings looking at the horizon, and I decided to join him. Mr. President, I am surprised you are still up this late. Hmm. I like taking night walks. Ah, one of my own. Yes, yes, we are very much alike. Doesn't like sleep. Is he gonna? Okay, he's asking why we can't sleep. Are you also worried about the future all the time? <laughs> it's an old man. He's been alive for more than seventy years. Spent most of those years worrying. What he realized was that his time, that in his time, was that worrying is simply a part of life. Yes, that's true. As the mankind, the mankind. Okay, we are. From, I mean, the mankind did fall forty feet off the steel cage, and we have to respect that forever. Uh, we are forever gullible. We always think about reaching out for what we don't have. And a part of what we don't have are the choices we could have made and their results. Thank you for your wisdom. Sure. It's getting chilly. He's going to go. Okay, cool. I will stay a little longer. Why not? Watch the water. You... <laughs> So, the dawn arrived and our ship moored outside the busy port of Wilburn. Among the usual flashes from cameras, we made our way to the train station in a convoy where we took the train to Halem for an uneventful trip. We arrived at the central train station of, Hale of Halem, the capital city of Vogsland. There was an incredible amount of people waiting for us. I stepped out of the train and immediately flashes went off. Our delegation met with various members of the Vogslandian cabinet. We took the cars and arrived at the Royal Palace. Flags of Volksland and CSP were waving next to the entrance. Assistants took my belongings and led me to the museum wing. It was there I saw Chancellor Hagel. He was inspecting a very large painting on the wall. Comrade Hagel, yes. He turned around. He was a man of small stature with a balding spot and a striking vis visage. His, uh, his famous pipe was in his mouth. He smiled and opened his arms. We hugged. Awesome. Comrade Rain, it's so good to see you. Wanted to meet us in person. Wow, this is this is wonderful. Yes, the pleasure's mine. 
Okay. Painting was made in 1776 by the famous Vogslandian painter Otto Kyburn. I looked at the painting. It must have been over five meters tall. That's crazy, man. It was a battle scene. On the left side, there were banners carried by Vogs, and on the right, swords. Countless spears formed a triangle at the center, and the sky was red from the blood. What do you think about it? I think we have come far. We can do much more through Unity. Oh, this is going well. This is, good. This is a good meeting. It's a good meeting. It's, it's, it's very, very happy. To me, this painting tells me how far we have come. Swords and Vogs might have had troubles in the past, but looking past that, we are brothers of old. No other two countries understand each other more in the world. I think exactly the same way, yes. We're agreeing. He nodded and pointed towards another painting that was almost as large as the first one. A burning city was depicted. Looking closer, I realized it was Conriat. The Great Fire of Conriat. The most shameful event in the entire Vogslandian history. The scars of it must still be aching. Another result of the evil of imperialism, I think. Yes. Well said. Oh, yes, we're, we're in agreement. Thankfully, we have cut the head off the snake called imperialism here in Volksland. We'll excuse him. The Chancellor stepped away with the guard while I looked around. I saw a more recent painting depicting the upheaval of farmers against an aristocrat. What did you say? What did you say? What? We didn't say anything. Oh, Hegel's loud voice echoed in the halls. Give the miners what they want. As for the director of the company, I want him tried for treason at once. No one can exploit our people and expect to get away with it. Oh, this guy. Okay, this guy's good. After giving the order, the guard left. Hegel walked over to me. Sorry about that. You know how it is. What was that about? Director of a mining corporation decided not to pay his miners. He's been handled. Revolution is a slow process. Slow but sure. Huh. I don't know about that. Follow me. We will have a short breakfast. I don't know if it's either slow or sure. We made our way to the exquisite dining room. I looked around and everything seemed to have been made out of the colors of gold, blue, and white. A local delicacy, smoked bear meat, was served with eggs. Mm. After a very delicious meal, we sat down on two couches. I immediately saw the portrait of Leon Malinyev staring down at me. What can you tell me? Okay. Sure. Spotted the portrait. Good friend of his. Don't agree with him on every matter. He demands respect. Belgslandian socialism aims to eliminate the power of the state through the promotion of responsibility, freedom, and well-being of people. One of our key cornerstones is the devolution of society to smaller councils with high citizen participation. Yes, that's what we want too. We believe that the revolution in Belgsland is stable enough that we do not need the vanguardist approach. We are already in the process of such transformation. However, our revolution here in Volksland owes a great deal to Malinyev. He is the father of Malinyevism and a symbol of global revolution. Not only is he the first communist rev revolutionary leader in the world, he managed to unite a whole continent, forming the greatest country in the world. Comrade Rain, if, if you'd like, I can put in a good word for you. I have a feeling you could get along with him. Would you like that? Yes, that would be amazing. Amazing! We need an ally. Two cups of coffee were brought by an assistant. I took a sip while he lit his pipe. Let's begin. Now, before you say anything, I think you will be glad to hear that I accept the deal. <laughs> yes. I had my doubts at the beginning, but they were cleared once I met you in person. Wonderful. Same goes for me. Oh, we're going to be we're going to be the most epic friend presidents. We're going to be president buddies. It'll, it'll be very presidential. It'll be, it'll be wonderful. What's a deal or two between in between Volksland and Sorland? We have so much more possibility between our countries. He'll sign the paper shortly. Got up from his seat, walked over to the window and looked outside. Now that that's out of the way. Oh, here's the trick. He's going to want to invade the island and we're going to support him. And we're going to anger a lot of people when we do it. Okay. Two things. I think you and I are like-minded people, he says. He'd like to solidify our newly found friendship and admiration over a military alliance, a pact that connects the two continents, much more than that, the strongest pact that ever came to be between the Volks and the Swords. What do we say? I accept. Most excellent. 
We're going to lose our good relations with, um, with Ag Agnolia there, but whatever. He called an assistant nearby. A moment later, the assistant returned with two shots of vodka. In Vogsland, we drink on a contract. Cool. Strong taste of alcohol turned into a sweeter aftertaste. He looked down for a moment, and he returned back to the window to look outside with his arms crossed. You know what pisses me off? Those damn Agnolians who claim our land is their own. Like, it's not enough. They kill my people in their homes in, in Helgeland, slaughtering them like cattle. Imagine they did that to Swordish people. What would you do? Huh. This is very tricky. I don't want to... I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do at all. Diplomatically, maybe? I mean, I agree. Planning on invading to save citizens. Okay. If I have Swordland, everything will be easier. Yes, I'm with you. We need we need an ally at this point. We really need to like do this here. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh no, what's happened now? The Ag Agnolians did what? He composed himself and smiled. Comrade Rain, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. There is a matter to attend to. Anything I can help with? Thank you, but no. Have a good day. Okay. Okay, we've made a friend and also lost a friend, but mostly made a friend, so good. Yeah. Swordland, Valgsland, Pact. Yes, 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 yes. And we recognize Helgeland as Valgslandian territory, which is sure to anger many people. Many, many, many people. But we're okay with that. We're picking sides. Gotta pick sides. It's important. All right, Anka. Private meeting with Petter. Okay, good. I drove alone through Halsterd suburbs until I reached the meeting point. Our old campaign headquarters, untouched since the night of the election. Okay, sure. Made my way up the dusty staircase of the office building. The light in the second floor hallway was out, so I used a cigarette lighter to find my way to the wooden door. Okay, sure. Pulled on the handle. It wouldn't budge. All right. He's coming. He's going to push with all his weight and made a screeching sound as it opened. Okay. Without further ado, I bid you welcome to this grand nostalgia trip, hosted by yours truly, Peter Vector. Hmm. He made an exaggerated bow. The dust from the open door was still settling down. Feeling sentimental yet? Oh, God. Sure, we'll play along. Okay. He misses it. Okay, sure. He walked over to his old desk and pointed to the gramophone that had annoyed our neighbors and kept us company for so many late nights. He flipped the switch and it filled the room with swing music from the 20s. I'll be damned, it still works. Thought this office was sold. No, he's been paying the rent. Okay, sure. Ugh. Glasses? Maybe I should have... No, that's too silly. Hmm. Let's check out my uh, desk drawers. Why not? few coins, pencils, and sheets of paper. Underneath them, something caught my eye. A photograph of me and Monica sitting under a tree. Ooh, must have been 10 or 15 years ago. We looked so young and happy. Cool, Monica would love to see this. We will show her. Nice find. Look at the baby, Anton. You didn't even have your iconic mustache. But, but we're, we're nothing without our mustache. We're taking the photo. Yeah. Let's look through the storage boxes. An emerald-colored statue of a goat, the symbol of Swordland. I remembered that this was a gift from Brenda, one of the 53 election campaign assistants. It would look good on my desk in the palace. Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. Always sucking up to you. And where did it get her? Seriously, where? I have no idea where she ended up. Let's take it. Why not? Uh, records next to the gramophone. One of my favorite albums ever, Mountains by Janet Gers. A set of plaintive 
folk songs that made me yearn for the countryside. Okay. What a classic. You should mail that to Frank. Okay. Yeah, sure. I am going to take the record, though. I like records. All right. Let's talk. I'm good, you know. I'm, I'm really good right now. Um, are you all right? Let's go up to the roof. Okay, well, whatever. We'll go up to the roof. Sure. Ah, Petter's crying. He's, he's, uh... He's definitely has a, has a thing going on. He messed up. Big time. Evelyn's leaving him. Shocking! I'm so surprised that Evelyn would... Okay, anyway. Oh, so surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's accurate. Well, we could, like... What the hell did you do? Um... I mean, it's either one or three, right? Because, like, you, you, they won't kiss and make up. Guess he shouldn't be. I've been sleeping with Livia. I knew you were sleeping with Livia. I figured that out ages ago. I had a feeling you got careless. It's just Evelyn hasn't been the same since she lost her job. Uh, that Well, that makes it okay then, right? Livia was giving me sultry looks from the day I hired her, which is you told me the reason you hired her. I mean, she was a good hire as it turned out, but you know. I was away, he was drunk. Sure, okay. More than a pretty girl, she's smart and kind. Oh, you're surprised. Okay, sure. Okay, well, men will be men is kind of okay. Horizontal polo. God, none of these answers are any good at all. It's almost like men don't know how to read. Uh, no, no, it's almost like men don't know how to write this kind of stuff. Um, I shouldn't assume the gender of the person who wrote this game, but <laughs> certain certain elements of it make me make me wonder. Doesn't necessarily mean anything though. Um. I mean, none of these are any good at all, right? I guess we'll say number four, sure. No, they're ending things. It's unprofessional. She wants Evelyn back. Okay, sure. Who else knows? Nobody. Well, Lucian knows everything. Of course he does. Uh, how many years have we known each other? How many scrapes have we gotten out of? I can handle this. Just trust me. Hmm. I turned to face my friend and vice president, the habits that had gotten him dubbed bad boy of sordish politics. When we were young, he was n no longer so charming, coming from a middle-aged man. Yet he was still a capable politician, and I couldn't ignore his track. He's not that capable. He's made so many mistakes. Jeez. Huh. Can weather this. You know what? I'm going to stand by him even though he's, like, shitty. Okay, you know what? We'll be, we'll be real nice to him. We're just going to be so nice to him. Like, we're not going to say it's okay, but we're going to be so nice to him. Call no one. <sighs> okay. Well, that sucks. Geopolitico. Shocking. Prime Minister Alvarez, uh, the Lesepian guy, condemned the military alliance. Of course he did, obviously. So there's a start of the day at the palace, and I think that's the only thing we have available to us right now. Oh, no. Lesepia. Okay. Sure, we'll hear from Lesepia. They announced trade sanctions against us. Oh, come on. Come on. Trade sanctions can't afford to weather that. Our budget's gotten way better. I didn't see that happen, but we're up to minus one instead of minus three. That's so much better. Couldn't sleep. Go to the palace early. Sounds good. It was empty save for a few cleaning staff. I entered my office and was shocked to see Lucian already there waiting for me. Mr. President, good. I was hoping you'd be early. Were you? What's going on? Sensitive matter, eh? Very good reason to believe Vice President and Secretary are engaged. Y yeah. Yes, he told me it's over now. 
You knew and didn't come to me. Oh, come on. We knew from like a long time ago. They made it so obvious. Are you kidding me? You didn't know? I assumed you were already aware. I mean, I did, right? On its own, given Mr. Vectern's established reputation as something of a playboy, the affair is unlikely to cause much damage. However, a more troubling possibility has been brought to light. Uh-oh. A recent conversation with Mr. Hailstone, our whistleblower from Rumberg, revealed the presence of a spy. I believe Miss Suno is our mole. Oh, no. She's been using the relationship to gather information. Tell me more. Uh-oh. They'll show us. What? No. No. Okay. Record at the palace at, at uh, 6 p.m. on the second day of our trade visit to Volksland. Oh, Olivia says, you sure everyone's gone for the day? Relax, Liv. No one's working that hard with President stick up his own ass off of um, off and ban about Volksland. Okay, then. Olivia giggled. I heard the sound of kissing and then of drinks being poured. Stupid petter. Mmm, I'm glad you stayed behind. Okay, sure. Did he tell you how it's going over there? Do you think there's a chance they'll form an alliance? As a matter of fact, yes, he and Secretary Hegel just sealed the deal. But enough work talk, Miss Suno. I want you bent over my desk. Hmm. Lucian grimaced and switched the tape off. Okay, then. And then what happened? Huh. <laughs> okay. Found her resume. There's a long gap between finishing secretarial school and arriving. Sure. Normally would be looked into, but Miss Suno was hired before a background check could be completed by Vector. And of course she was. Because she was hot. I remember that. Just then, there was a knock on the door. Livia opened it. Good morning, Mr. President. Mr. Gal Gal Galati. Didn't, I didn't realize you'd be in so early. Can I get you some coffee? Hmm. Well, let's let Lucian take the lead. Something the matter. Enough pretending. Your secret is out. Come on, Peter told me everything. Sure. Interesting. I think she's innocent. She seems innocent by these responses. She says, uh, yeah. She looks shocked at all this. He's fine. Okay. Before our inauguration, she was working as a cigarette girl at Portos. It's a saloon. She was saving up so she could afford her own place. Okay, here's the proprietary's number. Cool, sure. I probably should have just trusted her. That was my instinct. She's hoping to run for office herself. Okay, cool. Peter barged in. Oh, no. Lucien already found out. So, small chance she could be a spy. What? Reason to believe, yeah, it's, it's Lucien. Um... He rewound his tape and played it again. His eye, Peter's eyes wound, widened in dis disbelief. Peter thinks Lucian's a rat bastard. He is. He's clearly, he's not just a dinosaur. He's also a rat. He's one of those, like, famous ratosaurs. Um, you know. Uh, but, but, but that's okay, I guess. Maybe. I like, kind of like having a rat on side, I suppose. I mean, he listens to things. Bit of a, bit of a, a little bird keeper kind of person. Um, I'm sure there's an explanation. Okay.
Right. So Lucian suspected her of being a spy already, I guess. Hmm. Petter, Lucian wants Petter to resign. Livia says, if I may, I've been paying attention to what goes on in the palace, not because I'm some sort of double agent, but out of genu genuine interest. Hard as that may be for you to believe, Mr. Galade. She scowled at Lucian, then turned back to me. And from what I've seen, this man has been attempting to undermine your vice president at every turn, perhaps with the goal of replacing him. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Thank you. I'm happy someone at the palace still takes me seriously. I, I do, actually. I really like the secretary. I don't think she's a spy. Interesting. I mean, I, I, I kind of don't know who I agree. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Lucien, can I speak to you alone for a moment? I'm going to make him make the call. Okay. We're going to do it. We're going to make the call. Oh, God. I'll decide that once we have the results. We'll see. May need him to shoulder the blame. Yes, of course. He'll apologize to Miss Suno and tell her this has been a misunderstanding. Okay, cool. I'll do it myself. Huh, okay. So we have to, like, pave things over with our secretary in time to perhaps find her to be a spy or maybe just keep her around because she's pretty cool, actually, so I don't know. I don't know what to think about all that. Here are the results of the affair scandal. Okay. I ordered the investigation, yeah. So both Peter and Livy have been acting unnaturally nice to me, believing I'd let them off the hook. Okay. I was just settling behind my desk when Lucian knocked on my door. A moment of your time. Of course. Security team traveled to Lekovin to speak to the owners of the pub. They confirmed that one Livia Suno had worked there. Good. The description of her did not match that of your secretary. Oh no. It, however, it did match that of an unidentified corpse that washed up in Lenkirk Bay. Upon further investigation, operatives in Rumberg matched Miss Suno's description to a woman named Ilana Vance, last seen graduating from Crimsrad Political Sciences Institute. Our whistleblower from Rumberg recognized the name Vance as belonging to a deeply embedded covert agent, although he had previously assumed it was a man. So we, so we do have a spy, and we know exactly who it is. And I, my obviously, my gut instinct to trust her was wrong. So, so that's not good. How could we have missed all this? As mentioned, Miss Suno was hired without a background check. It's possible this could all have been avoided. Okay. But none of that can be helped now. The question is, what are you going to do, sir? What do you think I should do? Standard procedure would be to try her for treason. If we do so, it's only a matter of time before the media pieces together what happened. I'd look like a fool. That's why you must let Petter take the fall, of course. He knew his actions were problematic. Mr. Bacterin put you in danger by failing to order a background check on your closest personal staff. He betrayed your confidence to a woman with whom he was committing adultery. Anton, would you do the same to your so-called best friend? I don't know. I got only half a bottle of whiskey. That might help. Oh, jeez. I am your chief strategist. I have advised you on what I believe is the best strategy, but of course the ultimate decision is yours. All right. He'll be our scapegoat. Very well. I shall write a statement for you to read at the press conference. I'll leave you to handle Miss Vance. Thank you. Oh, God. This is awful.
please sit down? Why'd you call me in? Carl Greiser, the, the cop, is here. Elana Vance, you are under arrest on suspicion of treason. Please come with me. Her eyes darted. What the hell's going on? Have you got Lucien to get to your head? It would be quite a thing if Lucien actually was intending on replacing us, and this is his way his way in. Sorry it had to come to this. Olivia, tell Peter who you are. You're a saddled drunk in a lousy lay. Of course he is, obviously. Honestly, if I were a Rumberg spy, I'd barely have to do such a thing. You have two sword you you two have swordland right for the taking. She straightened up, ran a hair through her curls, and allowed Carl to lead her away. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> Morning of the trial. Hordes of reporters were gathered in front. Lucina Del Brick. It's weird. It's almost as if the game interpreted my answers as deciding to, like, accept him back into my good graces, which was not my intention, but we'll see. Now the media were beginning to question how a Rumberg double agent would be able to infiltrate. Okay. I was going to blame my best friend for a scandal that would shatter my administration, and he had no idea. Thank you for coming. As you aware, are aware, Ilana Vance, the Rumberg spy who poses my secretary, is currently on trial for treason. Rest assured, a security breach of this magnitude shall never happen again. However, the fact remains that she should never have been allowed to... Huh. Choices, choices. Infiltrate our administration. That she did can be directly traced to the carelessness of Peter Vectern. All the journalists gasped and murmured. Peter turned to face me, his mouth hanging open. Time to throw our best friend under the bus. Politics is grand. Oof. His willingness to put his own infantile desires over Swordland security has made him a threat to the state. No. Yeah. Therefore, the vice president has tendered his res resignation effective immediately. What the hell? We never discussed this. What else did you think would happen? I guess I had it coming the way I'd been carrying on. I just didn't think my best friend would be the one to stick in the knife. Well, I stick in a lot of knives. It's it's kind of what I do. The reporters were coming, becoming hard to ignore. One woman in the front row looked particularly insistent. Interesting. No codec available. Okay. Mr. Vectern. Let's let him take the question. Can you give us a comment? No, President Rain just about covered it. I'm a terrible vice president and a worst husband and a saddled drunk. Hey, look, he, he's doing it. He's doing the thing I wanted him to do. Are you implying that you and the covert agent posing as President Rain's secretary were engaged in intimate relations? Hmm. Relations, yes. Intimate, I thought so at the time. Interesting. Neither the president nor the vice president will be taking any more questions. That's excellent. That's He said the things I wanted him to say. He's taken the fall. He is my fall man. That is, that's the first good thing he's done, really, in this whole game, I think. So now he's going to go to the palace to pack his things. I'll come with him. I'm going to try to be a nice guy. Shook his head? Okay, sure. He'll make it out of the sunscathe. That's good. Matter of replacing them. Hmm. I have a few, I have a few candidates in mind. The motorcycle racing up my hill here outside. Very good, sir. 
We walked back the stairs to the courthouse and watched the rest of the trial. Okay. Well, that was quite the thing. All sort of post. Rumberg infiltrated Maroon Palace. President Secretary arrested. Oh, jeez. President innocent in spy scandal. Oh, good, Swordland. I agree. I am innocent. Lack of in time. Secretary arrested for treason. Um, yeah. Announce the press conference. Rain pin spy scandal. Vain on, blame on Vector. And of course, faced with an intelligence leak, I passed the buck. Well, I, yeah, sure. I, I, I did pass the buck. But it's all true, damn it. It's, it's true buck passing. He, in fact, had the buck himself in the palm of his hand the whole time. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean it's not true, you know? All right. New vice president or women's rights? Uh, let's go with women, women's rights first. Almost time for my appointment with the CR on women's rights. Cool. Here she comes. Oh, and Monica's coming in too. Yay. Thank, thank me for agreeing to this meeting. Good stuff. She's been dreaming about this ever since she volunteered with the Swordish League of Women. Cool. I think both of you together could finally bring change to Swordland. Yay. Progress. First off, um, Ciara wants to thank me for pu pushing a decree on establishing gender e equality in education. You know, this is something she's been trying to accomplish. The situation in the public schools was disturbing. With that said, we still have a long way to go before Swordish women are able to enjoy the r same rights and privileges as men or even as their counterparts in Arcasia and United Contana. We've been lagging behind on this for decades, and it isn't only a moral issue. I've seen enough revolutions in the world to understand the main driver of any change, money. Hmm. She flipped a folder open and started pulling out documents. In United Contana, law dictates that women earn the same wages as men in their respective fields. My research shows that this led to a 15.5% increase in productivity. You could say this had a direct influence on their superpower status. Arcasia passed laws ensuring maternity leave rights. Did they? <laughs> That's, I think, supposed to be the America of this world. I don't know if they really did that at all. Child daycare centers and tax deductions for working families. In turn, they experienced a 12.6% productivity boost. And both, both countries have also has, have significantly lower infant mortality rates, a statistic I believe is directly linked to the improved status of women. Our administration has thus far failed to pull Swordland out of its economic recession. She leaned back in her chair. So I'm asking, why not try passing similar laws? At worst, even if they fail to improve the economy, there'll be a significant step forward for our society. It's only logical. I agree. Monica handed me one of the documents and had a list of bullet points. The two of us talked it over, and these are the measures we believe are most urgently needed. There's criminalizing domestic violence. Yes, yes. Swordish men are still legally allowed to beat their wives. I agree, it's a travesty. Okay. As instances are especially high within Bluish communities. Uh oh. I would also advocate for setting up a special domestic violence task force in, com in collaboration with Bluish women's rights organizations. Monica looked at her strangely. Are you sure that's something we should focus on? The Blutes are different. They have their own rules. Monica, I'm surprised at you. We can't let women suffer. Hmm. Interesting. Should lift up everyone. That might, that might cost us with the Blutes. I'm not sure. We can discuss the particulars once the law is passed. Okay, support for working mothers. Isn't fair that women in the workplace are punished for having children. Remember what I told you about Janice. Yes, I do. Paid maternity leave and state-supervised daycare centers could be key to keeping mothers employed. Hmm. It's true, having children never hindered my career prospects. It shouldn't hinder a woman either. Sure. Equal treatment in the workforce. Yes, yes. Right now, Swordland has one of the continent's largest pay gaps. We need legislation ensuring that women and men are in the same wage. 
should also introduce quotas to get more women in positions of power in the assembly, for instance, or on the board of corporations. So we got some affirmative action. Uh, pay gaps is obvious. Affirmative action is something that can cause a little bit of backlash. It's probably worthwhile, though. It tends to be. Uh, narrowing the pay gap is a far more pressing issue. Ciara, we never talked about this, but I always thought with more women in power, higher status for all women would naturally follow. Oh, I don't know about that. Women are starving because they don't make a living wage. It's a damn slight more important than your friend Jane being passed over. Okay. Okay. I don't see a problem with quotas, but tackling the pay gap is much more urgent. Monica gritted her teeth. Well, she loves me. I know it. Covers all subjects. What are my thoughts? You've made a good case. If we can pull this off before the elections, the Reign administration will make history. Ciara wants to establish a commission for women's rights in Swordland with her as its head. Our goal should be passing and implementing a set of laws to solve the problems. As the commission's spokeswoman, Monica's responsibility will be to make speeches and organize fundraisers. She'll be the face of the movement while Ciara handles the groundwork. If I can uh, show that the First Lady is behind this movement, many women will feel encouraged. Ciara glanced down at her outfit, okay. Especially those who aren't keen on pantsuits. Um, Okay, sure. The organization's name will be Commission on the Status of Women. Okay. It's going to be damn hard getting your laws past the assembly. Even a watered-down version is better than nothing. Okay, sure. One more thing to consider. This could help silence any of the public's lingering questions regarding your vice president and the Livia Suno affair. You have a chance to be the hero. Think about Deanna and her future. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're going to approve the creation of the commission and support the bill. Monica hugs Sierra. She looks uncomfortable. We have a long way to go. Okay. And Monica loves us. I told you she loved us even though we made her uncomfortable by siding with Sierra at one point. Good. Okay. All right. So we're in Hall Sword. Swordish League of Women personal donation. Interesting. Do we want to? I don't know. I think we need to save that money to bribe someone to keep power if it comes to it. So I'm going to not donate, even though that's kind of like kind of shitty of me, but oh well. Oh, day I've been dreading since Petter's re resignation. At the entrance to my office, my new secretary, Sylvia, took my hat and coat. She was a matronly woman in her 40s. She had a spotless background, assisting various Maroon Palace officials. Replacing Livia had been easy, but replacing my vice president would be difficult. Swordish law dictated that if a vice president failed to complete his term, new candidates were to be put forward by members of the cabinet. After much deliberation, the list had been narrowed to three. Lucian was the front runner, followed by Gloria Tory, which is a no for me. She's she's just not that's not gonna happen. And Alvin Calvin. Maybe. Maybe Alvin Calvin. Oh no, he passed free market reforms. Oof. Okay. This is very tricky. I don't really love any of these. I think Lucian might be after my job, realistically, but I mean, he's been pretty good though for me. Okay, let's chat one on one, sure. One hell of a strategist, but why should I make you VP? It's precisely in my capacity as strategist that I've evaluated the experience and capabilities of your potential VPs. Objectively, he is the most qualified. Okay, sure. I would advise you not only to think about our long history together, but also the many crises that he has shepherded at us through. He won't say much beyond that. His work speaks for itself. Yeah. 
you're a valuable strategist. I don't know if I can afford to lose you. His ability to serve us will only increase. He got up from his chair. Expects he'll make the right decision. Okay, Gloria Tori. She's not surprised at all when her name was put forward. So tell me why I should pick you. Put it simply, years of experience. It's been a member of the assembly for 20 years, seven as its speaker. Okay. As you know, she's also the leader of the conservative wing of the party. Ugh. Tell me what you're getting at. Well, I'll be blunt. Being the leader of the conservative wing means that if I'm the vice president, we would have more votes. That would allow us to pass bills more easily. I'll think about it. She values order over everything. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, you being a woman is advantageous, sure. Strong woman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you would lose among traditionalists, you'd gain tenfold among women. Yeah, well, that's probably true. rather not align myself with the conservative wing, unfortunately. It's just not going to happen. Let's talk. It represents reformists. Um, what we need to do is catch up to our modern neighbors and surpass them. We can do that. Only possible if we set aside our differences. Okay. Excel in sort of new heights. Okay. Sure. I do like that, sure. Fact is, if he's the vice president, reformist members of our party will be more likely to support us. Yep. Makes sense. Dynamic youthful leadership. Looking at me, I'm the youngest member of the assembly, or I became the youngest member and rejuvenated Swordish politics. He wants to do the same. We need to be able to take risks and make gains, and that is only possible with a forward-looking perspective. Hmm. I'll consider it. Interesting. I don't actually know who I want to pick. I know who I don't want to pick, but I don't love either of the two candidates who I might decide on. Hmm. Well, I guess I have to make the pick then, don't I? Oh, God. So it's either Lucian or it's Albin. I'm not sure which. I like that Lucian could still be my strategist. I don't think he'll quit in protest or anything. And I'm also actually a little bit concerned that he might have been angling for this for a while. He could have easily, e easily, easily trumped up the charges against my secretary. They might not even be true. He's the only person who is in a position that could have done that. So maybe he is looking to stab me in the back, as, as I would do to others. Um, I don't like that Albin is all, likes free market reforms, whereas Lucian's just kind of like supported wherever I've gone. Hmm. I think Albin's a better politician. That's important. I'm going to pick Albin. Picking Albin. Oh, now I have to talk to Lucien about it. We're on our way to my office, holding a mug of coffee in one hand and a folder of documents in the other. We turned a corner and he spoke. The Antraf anniversary is coming up soon, the most important day for the Bludish populace. Watani Antraf is one of their symbols, as you know. Your presence at this event would show your desire for a more unified swordland. We will reap the benefits. I agree, actually. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. You are right. He nodded. We rounded another corner to reach the last corridor leading to my office. He suddenly stopped in front of one of the doors. The plaque that once said Vice President Peter Vectern had been removed. The door was halfway open, and I could see a few workers moving boxes in the room. One of them saw us, bowed his head, and changed the name tag to Vice President Alvin Cal Clavin. Alvin Clavin. Gotta pronounce his name right now that he's my VP. 
You can leave it there, thank you, he says. He noticed us and immediately made his way over. Mr. President, Lucian. That's Mr. Galande to you, Mr. Vice President. Oh, Lucian is upset. He's like an angry dinosaur. He's going, you know, he's very angry. Very Lucian. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Good to see you. He's almost ready to get to work. Yay, Mr. Gal Galade, please deliver this to my secretary. Oh, please don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that, Albin. Don't be like that. No, he's not your servant. Superior, what the hell? We work with requests here, Mr. Clavin, not orders. Then I request, Mr. Galade, could you please deliver this, please? Jesus. For the Antraff matter, I will present you with our opinions later. I think I made the wrong choice, people. That was not impressive. Well then, he's going to get back to tidying up the room. Thank you for visiting. I will stop by as soon as this is done. I want you to try to get along with Lucian. Okay. Yay, second cup of coffee. Good stuff. Coffee makes the world go round. News. Radical. Albin Clavin is the vice president. Looking at the pick objectively, I catch myself thinking that honestly it could have been worse, much worse. President Rain could have picked Mr. Clavin's conservative counterpart Gloria Tory, for example. Regardless, we can say with certainty that Mr. Clavin will be a much better vice president than Mr. Vector, and I agree. I, I, I very much agree with that. Okay. Mo mediation of a dispute. Oh, another one of these between the military and the police. Between Yosef and Lilius, okay. I've seen reports um, of an issue that rose between the police forces and the uh, gendarmerie units. Gendarm, gendarmerie. Oh, armory. Gendarmerie. Okay, got it. Uh, the report said that an operation against a dr drug trafficking gang in Vessord failed due to miscommunication. It was not hard to guess what this meeting would be about. About water, maybe? Oh, yeah. We entered the city hall and made our way to the second floor. I could hear Yosef and Lilius's voice echoing through the hall. I opened the doors to the meeting room. The two ministers did not even realize. This is unacceptable, says Yosef. How dare the police meddle in the affairs of the gendarmer gendarmery? It was your men who started this ridiculousness and meddled with an ongoing police investigation. The voices were getting louder and louder. Rural security is my jurisdiction, and your men were way outside of Vessord. Of Vessord, yeah. We are here to help with the matter. What's going on, Mr. President, Mr. Clay, Mr. Vice President? Apologies, but Miss Graff here fails to understand her place. No, Mr. Lancia, you are the one who does not understand his place. If you continue to do so, you will pay for it one day. Oh, God. Don't worry, we'll solve it. This issue has been in the back of my head for a long time, and now it's caused real damage, says Lilius. Yosef says, indeed it has, all because of the exemplary behavior of your police. Yosef, let's hear your side. The Lieutenant General of the Gendarmery was tracking a drug trafficking ring in the countryside of Vessord. We immediately acted on it. Just when we were about to raid their hide hideout with live weapons, the police units arrived at the scene and alerted the criminals. As a result, criminals got away. Okay. Isn't there a line of communication? There is, but the Minister of Defense decided to avoid notifying the police department about the raid. The same could be said about you, because these reports show that you knew about the gang and their stash in the countryside. How do we solve this issue so it never happens again? I think this was the last drop. Internal security matters should be handed to the Ministry of Interior completely. We are called the Ministry of the Interior for a reason. We can't let any more screw-ups happen. I want the Gendarmerie to be transferred to the Ministry of the Interior. What? Woman, are you out of your mind? Mm. To me, what needs to change is not the structure itself, but the problems in it. Says Albin. Albin says we need to find out what is causing this and fix it. 
I believe we just told you the fix to the problem, Mr. Clavin. Please address me as Mr. Vice President. Okay, sure. You really like your new title, don't you there, Clavin? Ugh. I simply don't think the end justifies the means in this case. This is not an individual case. This has been happening for a long time, in case you did not know, Mr. Clavin. Ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I won't hand over the gendarmerie to, you, to her out of the question. Interesting. Do you have a better solution, Yosef? Whatever operations overlap, we should engage at a lower rank with the local officers on both sides. We could work on establishing that, but it still doesn't change the wrong system. Interesting. No matter what we need to eliminate this gray area and modernize our internal security. Yosef sees what's going on here. She set this up to create an incident. This is going too far. What point? What proof do you have? Yosef says there's no way the police has arrived at the right time of a month-long search on the exact day and minute of the gender marine raid. Let's take this down a notch with the accusations. Please. It's unheard of. It's nonsense. Don't believe a word of it. Heed my word. Okay, when dealing with these situations, you need to always look at who gets what out of it. Well, I do agree with that. I won't stand idly by these utterly ridiculous and baseless accusations. I don't have time for this. Hmm. What's our decision? It's very tricksy, this. Let's see. I mean, I don't really like either of these people. I mean, it's it's uh, about, you know, um, like uh, policing jurisdiction in rural areas. Leave it with the feds and the military or give it to the local police. I think there'll be no change. Yep, we're protecting it, the structure and authority of the Ministry of Defense. Sure. From now on, work together and don't fight amongst each other. I want capable and effective members of the cabinet. Okay. They're going to do their best. Sure. I think that's an all right decision. I think. Okay. So what's going on in Halsord? Briefing on healthcare. Okay. Meeting with Pascal. He arrived at my office with stacks of papers underneath both arms. Mr. President, he says. He put the mountain of papers on my desk. It made a loud thud sound. I know this seems like a lot. Reviewing it shouldn't take more than a day. Okay, sure. Or maybe two. Very well, thanks for bringing these in. No problem at all, he says. They contain very important information about the status of our health care. Salaries, spendings, hospital reports, whatever you like. We can go through this together. Sure. But he doesn't want to bore me, so quick summaries. Yay, quick summaries. Uh. He breathed a sigh of relief as he put on his reading glasses to look at the document he was holding. Or I breathed a sigh of relief. Good stuff. So, we have concluded our report for the year. Thanks to the allocated funds, we have improved the health care in the country overall. I have used the resources to begin a comprehensive health reform. We have more patients treated, less waiting times, and higher treatment quality than the years before. Okay, so we could thank them for the hard work, or like say, under my presidency, I want them to have the best health care they can get, blah, blah, blah. Um, or just as I expected, it was a good decision. Yeah, you know what? Give the credit to Pascal. This wouldn't be possible without your wise decision, Mr. President, so thank you. Oh, I agree. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very fine people, too. We are certainly on the right path to challenge even Lesbia or Volgsland in this matter, but we're not there yet. However, give it a few more years and we might even surpass them. Huh. I think we will, pa we will surpass them, Pascal. Yes. Yes, we will. Okay. The investments we've poured into our rural health facilities paid off greatly. The quality of care increased due to upgraded equipment, and we were able to hire more staff. Inequality is our worst enemy, and we're one step closer to beating it. Yeah. 
The disparity in services needs more effort to be completely solved. However, the additional funds for the rural areas are a great start. All these efforts have resulted in a clear increase in quality in health services. Yay! Now that he has given us the short summary, there's a very important matter to discuss. He leaned over to grab his briefcase. He pulled out a tan-colored package. The package was stamped with big red letters that read, Confidential. Pascal opened the package and brought out a few documents. He handed them over to me. I'm going to take a look. It was a report from the Ministry of Health. Each page had a stamp on it that read, For President's Eyes Only. The report was titled, Polio Outbreak in Bergia. I saw this one coming, that's for sure. How bad is it? For now, it seems to be under control. We have put a few villages under quarantine. The total number of infected are currently 1467. Death toll is at, at 23. If we have more outbreaks, the results will be terrible. Thankfully, we have received the additional funding to our health care. That should curb the infection rate. Although I'm afraid even that might not be enough. This is a very serious matter, Mr. President. Lives of sordid citizens are at stake. What can we do about it? We have done our research. There is a cure. A vaccination was recently invented in the United Court Contana by a doctor, and the formula has been made available for free in the entire world. No matter what people think about United Contana, if the same thing happened in Arcasia, we would be paying the price for it. Thanks to the very good decision made by you to increase the funding for our health care, we have the capability to produce this vaccine locally. Yes, we made the right call. But he's afraid simply having the vaccines won't help. We need to make sure they're administered. We need to implement nationwide mandatory polo vaccinations. With this order, he can immediately get to work. Might seem, ex seem excessive, but it's necessary. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're just going to do it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get to work immediately. Thank you for your time. Hey, we got achievement unlocked. Welfare state. We are a welfare state. Glorious. Glorious, glorious, glorious. What's here? Hmm. Desolonization. I love it. Um, yeah, well... Since we're a glorious welfare state, since we're going to get a free vaccine provided by our, our, our brothers and sisters in, in the Eastern Bloc, um, you know, free to the entire world, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I think we're just a little bit over an hour, and I think it's time to end this year episode of Let's Play Suzerain. So, I think this is going to be the last episode I'll record for today. But you won't know that if you're on the YouTube land because I'll have another set of episodes recorded just in time to pick up where this one left off. So I'll catch you all real, real, real soon. And until then, good night. <laughs>